Welcome to Canvas Drawing Tools Tutorial. We access Canvas website via Google search engine. The main page of the website looks quite colorful. Our main purpose here is to introduce Canvas new drawing tool. We log in through an account we already have. We will show the first example through the whiteboard application. There is a small presentation about what you can do with the whiteboard application content creator. We enter the whiteboard option to show it in practice immediately. A welcome template greets us at the entrance. There are a number of ready-made examples. There are no limits to what we can draw, what we can do. In total, there are three different pencil tools, one eraser and a free selection tool, as well as a choice of tools such as color, transparency or thickness. We have a tool panel with color, thickness and transparency settings. Two of these three pens are round tip pens. One of them is shown as thin to make it easier to choose, but there is no limit to its use. We can thicken or thin it at any time. We can also customize the color and transparency properties. Now let's talk about the pen. I deleted it because it was a bit bad. When I was drawing with the mouse, I changed the color of the pen tool to black and I'm rewriting it. I can change the color options as I want. I can adjust the thickness and use it as I want. We can adjust the transparency properties in the same way. Now let's move on to the other second pen. As you can see, we can use it in any thickness we want. There is no big difference with the pen tool. They are almost the same as round tip pens. The main difference between a highlighter and a marker is that a highlighter is a flat pen with a cut. Don't be confused by its transparency. We can make it opaque or more translucent. It's all possible. I'm going to make a simple diagonal sketch. For this I chose the pen tool in the thinnest and blackest color. I'm slowly starting to create the sketch. Of course. Here I differentiate my lines by adjusting the color and transparency properties. I made some lines thicker and opaque to be contour lines. Each line is a vector object, and when we want to delete them, it deletes them as a whole, i.e. it treats the line segment as a single element. As you can see, all these lines, when combined together, can form a group and behave as a single object. To achieve this, we use the grouping command. After using the grouping command, we can manage the new shape more easily. We can easily move, rotate, and do other manipulations. I make a copy of the shape and do rotation and resizing on it. But if I try to delete this grouped shape, the eraser tool will not work. But if I want to erase a different line segment, a piece of drawing that is on its own, I can easily erase it. This is so that complex shapes created by mistake are not lost or destroyed with the eraser tool. If we still feel the need to delete it, we can delete the created group object or drawing with the delete key after clicking on it. Or we can ungroup group objects to separate the group so that we can again perform the individual. Partial or complete erasures possible with the eraser tool. Or we can use the selection tool to select parts of a drawing in batches and delete them again in batches. Navigation on Canva is possible with a little more freedom, especially with the whiteboard application, since the space is unlimited. We can expand the workspace as much as we want. We can zoom in and out with the control 
and mouse will key combination. Or we can set the size of the page in the lower right corner of the workspace as a percentage. In Canva we can pan freely by holding down the mouse wheel or using the third mouse button to move freely around the workspace. As we mentioned before, we can use the eraser tool to erase lines and shapes created individually. If these lines are not in a group, we can erase them by ungrouping them. Using the selection tool, we can also erase in bulk, unless, of course, these objects are grouped. I will add a few backgrounds from the drawing paper samples to the workspace. We can easily draw on these backgrounds. However, there is an important detail to consider. Each shape we create has position information and layer information. Canva has a simple layer system. We will cover this topic in more detail. When we want to bring the shapes we created earlier to the top of the new sheet in the workspace, we see that they can stay in the background according to the location information. This is because the shape is located on the bottom layer due to its previously created position. With matte shapes, objects in the background become invisible. We can work around this by editing the position information or layer information. Yes, we solved the problem by foregrounding the shape. We can also lock objects to protect them from accidental selection or modification. Locked objects won't shift or be accidentally changed unless they are unlocked. This also makes it practical to place other shape objects on top of objects like backgrounds. It prevents them from being accidentally selected and allows us to easily design and draw on them. To see the difference between locked objects and unlocked objects, I use the selection tool to move the bottom background paper. But even though we have selected the top locked background and shape, we cannot move it left or right because they are locked and their position is fixed. We can more easily draw, design, and write on our lock page. As we mentioned earlier, each line, object, Image that we add to the workspace or background with pen tools or other tools is treated as a separate object, collectively they can form a whole. They can be grouped or manipulated individually. When we select them with the selection tool, we can see that each has a separate property and object area. We can also select them collectively and manipulate them without grouping them yet, such as resizing and changing angles. Of course, before or after grouping, we have the possibility to edit each object fragment or drawing fragment, line or letter separately, to work on them one by one again, to change them. We can also transform the position of selected objects or lines with the arrow keys on the keyboard. Here in the top left corner you will see the position section. In the location section there are alignment and layers. In the layers section we can see the order of each object or part of an object on the workspace. The topmost object or drawing appears at the top. The bottom one at the bottom, this difference is better understood when they overlap in position. When we hover over it with the mouse, it also shows the position of each of them on the workspace in a box. Through layers. We can also double click on a selected object on the layer to focus on the area of the workspace where that object is located. To give a more concrete example, 
Let's imagine that we have lost the shape we are looking for in the workspace. At a very distant point in an environment such as a whiteboard application. But when we come to the layers section and find the relevant object when we click on it twice, it will automatically move us to the relevant region. Layers provide us a great convenience in this way. Layers also display the lock status information of locked objects. We will move to a different workspace to explain layers and layer management with simpler examples. But first, we name and save this workspace. This way. When we want to open our project later, it will be saved in the cloud in our account. I go back to the home page, and then, optionally, I can select one of the projects I created earlier and open it. As promised, in order to better explain the layer logic and show more detailed features of the drawing tools, we are going to work with a desktop wallpaper example. Instead of an unlimited space like in the whiteboard application, we will work in a limited space, thus, we will be more focused on the subject. After selecting the wallpaper design option, we start with a blank wallpaper page. I chose one of the ready-made shapes, set its colors, and created another copy. This time, instead of a circle shape, I will use a square shape and color it differently. As you can see, one appears in front of the other. This is due to the difference in layer position information. We also created a triangle in a different way. The last created shape or drawing is always at the top. But their position information is not fixed. We can change the layer order as we wish. These basic shapes will help us to better understand the concept of layers and how they relate to each other. Apart from layers, there is another system for position information the range by page option. If I select the free shapes we created here and center them all, they are aligned to be in the center of each other. However, the circle shape disappeared. This is because the circle shape is in front of the other shapes in terms of the order of layers. It completely covered the square and triangle shapes and left the circle shape behind. You notice that when I shift the shapes in the topmost layers on it and turn to different positions, my circle shape doesn't disappear, it's just not visible because it's in the background. It's possible for each object to be in front or behind the layer, or even in front or in the middle of the others. The best and easiest place to manage and monitor this is the layer system window. When I open the layer window, I see three newly created shapes and their order with a white background at the bottom. At the top, as seen on my page, I have my round blue shape at the top of the layer sequence. In the middle, the square shape is at the bottom and the triangle shape is a bit more in the middle. For the sake of illustration, I move my blue circle shape at the top to the middle row, that is. I line it behind the square and in front of the triangle, right in the middle. The new layer order is immediately updated on the page. We can sort objects. Objects or drawings in layer order at any time when we right-click on the quick commands. There are options such as move to the top or move to the back. Or, from the layers window. It is possible to rearrange the position of the selected image or object in terms of the layer by drag and drop. This way we can change the layer order of each object and achieve the layout we want. This gives us great flexibility and control when organizing our design. We can also use different layers and alignment options to manage complexity and increase the depth of the design.
we create a third page to show the drawing tools and capabilities and more detail instead of white as the background. We assign a different paper pattern. For this, we do a search in the elements section. We transfer a beautiful paper image to the background and rearrange its position on the page. We lock this drawing paper image to make it easier to draw on it. As we mentioned earlier, each page has its own layer information. We create a fourth page and assign it a different background image, an old paper style. We also lock the background of the fourth page. The fifth sheet is a different paper pattern and we transfer another paper image onto it. We can import as many shapes or images as we want. Their alignment will change according to the layer position information. The last image file or object we added will be aligned so that it is at the top of the layer of the page. In this way, we can create different layers on our page and the content of each layer will be independent of each other. After completing this broad example, our fifth page is done. We will start going into the details of the potentials of the drawing tools. We activate the drawing tools panel again. Using pencils we can create smooth shapes with freehand drawing. When we complete a near circle shape by drawing freehand, when we hold down without releasing the drawing, if it is a near circle shape, it automatically completes a smooth circle or ellipse shape. Thanks to this auto editor feature, we can easily create smooth shapes. Every shape or line we create with drawing tools is a vector object. We will go into vectors in more detail in the following lessons. If we wish, we can group them or change the position of the layer order information. In groups of basic shapes together, a preview of our shape becomes visible in the layer section. In the same way, by grouping our drawings and objects, we can treat them as a whole. This grouping option gives us more flexibility when organizing our design. We can also access a variety of line types with the ready-made shape tools, from solid lines to dashed lines or lines joined by dots. There are many options available. By creating these lines, we can get different shapes. When we create a regular or different shapes, we may need to hand paint their inner colors or fill in the colors ourselves. With different colors and transparency levels, we can add more variety to our shapes and drawings. This way we can achieve the look we want by using different colors, line types and fill colors in our design. Using all these features, we can maximize our creativity and design skills. You now have a better understanding of the tools and techniques you use in the design process with this knowledge. You can create more complex and detailed designs and express your creativity much better. I hope this guide will help you make your use of Canva drawing tools more effective and enjoyable. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. We have come to the end of the content. We will continue with more beautiful trainings, and we will be with you again very soon. Don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe, to subscribe and, click and click the bell, bell to receive bell. notifications for new videos. See you again soon, and thanks for watching.